of Kitty Factory. And Lucas Morley as well. Can't get rid of me that easily. Dang it. <laughs> she tries. Yes, but it doesn't I always did. work. No. So, what do we got today for them? We got the do's and don'ts and the basic rules of surfing. Basic stuff. Stuff that we gotta put out there to let you know, please don't do those things or something bad can happen. Yes, you know? 100%. Very, very important that they understand that. And just like every sport, every single sport has the rules. And a lot of people don't think that just because you know you buy your surfboard at the shop, you walk out to the beach and there's a beach, it's you know, usually they don't have any rules just sitting out there. Usually. They usually. Don't. Think about how many beaches we've gone to and there's no etiquette, no No, nothing. but there's a lot of beaches nowadays that have the surf etiquette right outside um, if it's a surf spot for sure. Yeah, the more more known surf spot. Yeah, than, yeah but the yeah. beaches surrounding it possibly wouldn't have it, so you wouldn't know what the heck to do. Right, so remember, surfing has rules just like any other sport. Yep. Everybody started in some sport, some way, and had to learn everything about it, right? You weren't we all started somewhere. born with all the rules and all the things you can do. No, no, no. And we, we all started the same way. We were not all professional as soon as we jumped on a surfboard. No. That's not realistic. A lot of people tend to forget that because they'll see a new person coming out. And they'll be so mean. So mad. Just cut them, spray them in the face and get, say, get the heck out of here and all these things. But... We that all person started somewhere. started somewhere too. Even if it was a grown with mom and dad telling them where to go and push them to the wave, they forgot where they came from and they thought they were God's gift to earth and they were, you know, they magically knew everything. Yeah, and it seems like the professional surfers that are on the CT tour are actually the most humble or pro athletes. Right, you know? the wannabes that are not. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe don't be, be don't become a wannabe. Be a little bit humble, you know, and, and help somebody out, and maybe you know, pal out to the guy instead of like ripping his board off his or chopping his board in half. You know, help him out. keep your testosterone down and your machismo, and like talk to them and say, hey, dude, check this out. I almost killed you because you paddled towards the white water, or you paddled towards the face of the earth, uh, the wave while I was surfing, face of the earth, instead of going to the white water where I'm not gonna go that way, right? Because yeah. there's no way for me to surf there anymore. So there's definitely ways to approach Talk that. Talk to people, guys. It's all about communication. If you're not communicating and you're just yelling at somebody, then mm -hmm. really? Yeah, for sure. That's not good. No, no not, not at good. all. So uh, things like the priority of surfers and holding your board down and rip currents and beaches and more is yeah. what we're going to be talking about. And first thing we're going to start talking with you guys today is about the surf conditions, right? So. If you've been surfing for a long time, I hope to God that you already know about all the surf conditions and I really the do. things you can't so. do. Uh, but, you know, when you're walking out to the beach and you got your board in your hand, you need to immediately set that down and start assessing the water condition yeah. first. Don't just go out there, guys. You need to analyze what's going on. You need to see where the rip current's at. You need to see if it's done or dusk because those are not good times, even though it's probably the best time to yeah, surf, you, you, it's a, not a good time to surf. Right, here's the thing, you're going to see, um, no it makes complete sense because <laughs> you're going to see a lot of surfers that go out early early in the morning because they have to go to work maybe at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and the wind is usually dead around that time too, especially in Florida or actually you know when we went to Guatemala no, you, Yeah, even in those countries it's it was so much better early at dawn in the or dusk for sure. But it's not the safest. We do not, if you're starting out, do not paddle out at dawn or dusk. You, you don't have enough experience to um, know what's going on at those times. But not only that, um, there might not be any guards around. There might not right. be that many people around you. And not only that, it's usually when a little shark, you know, shark bait. Yeah, uh, it's feeding time. It's feeding time. Sure. They definitely do their uh, best feeding during dawn and dusk. So just be aware of those things. You know, you can definitely paddle out on those days. We've done it. You just have to be aware, know your beaches, know what's under you. And, and so don't on. be by yourself. If you're going to paddle out those times, do not paddle out by yourself. Yeah. Again, do people do it? Yes. People do it all the time, but God forbid something happens to you. You got knocked out by your own board and nobody's there and you're not cool anymore because you're dead. Exactly. Simple, right? All right. So the rip currents, Walk onto the beach, right? There's going to be usually, and this is where people that don't surf or never surf or they're just patrons at the beach, 
you know, they came down from another state that doesn't have, or a country that doesn't have any oceans, and they're looking at the ocean, they're like, okay, awesome, look at those big waves there, look at those big waves there, oh, here's this channel magically with no waves. Guys, just so you know, he's done mm -hmm. eight years of ocean rescue, so he will talk to you guys about rip currents and drifts and everything for hours. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, I, you know, I just want to have people being safe, and not only that, the worst part about it is I've rescued plenty of surfers as well, you know, and it's mainly where their leash broke and their super shred knowledge didn't translate to I'm a good swimmer because they had a flotation device, which is actually should be a no-no, you know, you should be definitely a good uh, swimmer if you're going to be a surfer too, and I'm not talking, you know, Michael Phelps type of swimming, I'm talking about confident swimming, survive. where you can get stuck on a rip current for 30 minutes and you're not going to jump because you know how to tread water, you know how to swim in your back, you know how to freestyle stroke, breast stroke, whatever, whatever it may be, right? Yeah, So anyways, we're going to talk about that later, so rip currents. Rip currents, water breaking, water breaking, no water breaking, big channel, magically there's no waves, that's where I'm going to go, no. That's not where you're going to go. That's, That's where you're going to get place. sucked out, right? But for swimming, if you don't know how to swim well, you don't want to go there. For surfers, you can take that channel out. But you need to, to have ocean. experience and you need to understand how rip current works because if you do not understand and you just go out there and surf by yourself yeah. or surf for the first time and you paddle out in that rip current, you're going to get sucked out to the deep ocean and that's not going to be fun. So every time you're stuck in the rip current, what do you do? Well, I'm going to swim horizontally. Swim to the side. The beach goes this yep. way. You swim Follow this Follow the way. sand, right? Don't swim towards the sand or paddle towards the sand. Follow you're going to be the, going the out, left, beach. or right, you know? Uh, also, when you're assessing the rip, make sure that you see how far out it goes past the break because there's some gnarly rips that go past Way the surf far. break, and that's where she's talking about. You're going to get taken. You're like, all right, I'm at the lineup. And next thing you know, you're sitting on your board and you start looking and back and you're like, why are all the surfers far. behind me and I'm in the middle now by myself? That's because you stayed in that rip and it kept sucking you out left or right or straight, whichever way you may gone past the lineup. So just be aware of that, uh, that way you don't get caught in it and um, you just stay as safe as possible. But you can't take that rip current out to the lineup. Yeah, you right? can take it as an advantage to get out, but you, you just make sure, guys, that you have experience because we have seen people... Get in real trouble if they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, kids too. You know, kids get stuck on the rip current and they do first thing every time. Guaranteed. Love it. See it all the time. They abandon their flotation device. They're like, oh my gosh, this thing's slowing me down. And they throw it to don't the side and they try to swim back. Guys, keep your flotation device. It yeah. is the best thing you have. Would you jump off the boat to swim back? No. Or would you stay on the boat and float? You, you stay you guys, on your flotation, you stay yeah, there. Very, very important. It, don't abandon that thing. It's the most important no, thing no. that you have. It will help you out for sure. Um, also, pay attention to the drifts, right? So, say you're going to paddle out, right? Here's the break you want, but it's a horrible south drift or north drift. You have to understand where you're going to paddle out because yes. if I'm looking at this spot straight of me and there is any drift left or right, north or south or whatever it may be, you can't just go in right here because it's going to take you out the either that way or that way, right? So you have to understand where that drift is. So say here's Salome, I need to go a hundred yards past her. So by the time I paddle out to the lineup, I'm actually in front of her, you know, so very important that you pay attention. Be aware of that. Yeah. That drift is going to be huge. So you save time and you're like, these are all the people. This is where everybody's surfing. This is where it's safe. I want to be with a, you know, a bigger group of people. You're not going to paddle out straight if there's a drift or it will take you past it now you're going to be paddling against that drift the whole entire time not fun at all and if that happens guys just go in walk where you start and go back that that's called drift sessions you just go in walk back go in walk back yeah We've if you can't stay times. if you can't stay in the same spot you're going to want to just catch a wave come back in walk past everybody yeah. Jump back, paddle in, and then by the time you make it out, hopefully you're right where everybody is, and then you'll do a little uh, paddle battle against the drift to kind of stay in that same spot as much not as possible. Not too much fun. So if you're just starting out, that is probably not a good day to start surfing no. when there's a drift. Don't do that. Yeah. Also, uh, another thing we want to make sure people don't do when they're just going out there is like if you're, if you're brand new and you wax your board and everything is beautiful, 
when you put sunscreen, which is super important for protection. Make sure you put sunscreen on. I've gotten burnt. I am the pro at that. If you need tips on how to get burnt. Yeah. Yeah. No. Burnt face for sure. No, no, no. Right? I try to do good. I try. But the sunscreen, don't put it on your chest. Don't, don't put, put it, it on, on your, your chest, your belly, because it will make it so slippery yeah. off the wax. And yeah. then you have to take the wax out of your board and... Just don't do it. Yeah, don't put that. Don't put the the sunblock on your chest. Well, you know, wear a rash guard. Get a rash guard so you yes. can block from it. You know, because it will make a huge difference by putting it on your chest, and you're going to be sliding off. And like you said, you're going to have to remove the wax depending on how much uh, sunblock you did, and it's going to be bad for you. Yeah, it's just not fun. Right. Don't, don't do that. Now, um, good sunblock. So this came from a dermatologist. Like. I'm not a doctor by any means from it, but I did, uh, I grew up on the beach, right? I did Ocean Rescue for years, and uh, the best one that the doctor recommended for the Ocean Rescue team was um, any sunblock that has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, right? Zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and mainly you can find that in kids. Kids um, sunscreen, we have a baby sunscreen, banana boat. Um, so but banana boat, do, guys, the the spray sunscreen, no, no, don't get that. No, that's horrible. It actually gets you more burnt. No, that's not more than be a good anything. Thing. No. Yeah, make sure that it has those two ingredients. We for our face, instead of having something liquid, we like to have the zinc. Um, one. I actually wish we had that here. And it's guys. it's kind of like a block. If you go on there, if you go on the website, you'll be able to see it. It's like a block, and you just put it on. And then, you know, get it all around. Yeah, make it a little, you know, a little mask. Yeah. Like the whole thing, I do it all the time. People are like, hey, look at ghosts. Say, hey, look, I got cancer. That's not cool. That's not cool. Just oh. wear that thing, mask it up. It's for your own safety. Don't worry about what other people are going to think about you, you know? 100%. You don't want to have skin cancer. That is not fun. Yeah. So, like, ingredients in food and everything, same thing with what you're putting in your skin. You know, recommended by a dermatologist to us was... Any um, sunblock that has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It yeah. can have all those other fancy names, but they said these are the ones that blo block the worst UV rays, if I'm not mistaken, um, or sun rays, and you want to go with that for sure. 100%. So make sure you guys put sunscreen on everywhere but your belly. Yeah. Don't do it. And I wear a full rash guard, so people like to wear that other part, but they still you got to put the, the sunblock here. It, you know, <laughs> a dollar more, two dollars more, I bought a full you know, rash guards. So. I don't like rash guards. It so. is up to you. But again, then she goes through the whole pains of being burned and all that fun stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So depending on how <laughs> what you like to do, I don't, I like to be able to lay down in bed and be okay. And for some of you guys that, you know, have been following us, you know that we do judo and jujitsu and stuff like that. If you have one of these rough geese, which is what the uniform oh, we call on your back. Oh, that is not fun. Been there, done that. It tears up. It tears up your Yeah. I learned my skin. lesson, trust me. 100%. I sure did. So, where to surf, right? Uh, well, again, it, it really depends on the person. If you've been surfing for a long time, most people don't like surfing in guarded areas because there's rules to follow. But then again, in, uh, in a guarded area, if they allow you to surf, you have safety as well because if something happens, most of these people They're are watch EMTs it. or paramedics. Uh, hopefully, at least in Florida, we have a couple of those apartments that are... You have to be an EMT. I think California is like that too. I think. I think. I think. Correct we, me if I'm wrong, but yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think every beach is in the U.S. You have to be an EMT. I don't think so in Australia. I think you just need a CPR. Well, it's definitely not here in Florida. Sure, sure. There's plenty of them that are not oh. EMT required. Like, yeah. There's. Okay. Well, you guys, let us know where you're from. Let us know in the comments where you're from, and let us know if they're EMT certified. At your local beach, right? Yeah, it helps that way other people that are watching the suit can see, like, oh man, I'm traveling to Colombia. And yeah, they have lifeguards that are certified, which by the way, when I went to Guatemala and Nicaragua and El Salvador and so on, there were no lifeguards. There's no lifeguards. Zero. Like no. there's a guy that had a volunteer shirt on. He also had jeans. You're not going to rescue me, bro. You have jeans on, you know? Yeah. So when you travel to those places, make sure you're aware of what's going on yeah. in the situation and don't surf by yourself in those places. Mm -mm. Don't do it. No. And also be aware too, when you are in the guarded area, some beaches are, uh, they have a black ball flag. So it's a yellow rectangle with a circle, a black circle in the middle. 
And if you see one flag on the left and one flag on the right, you can't surf in between it. You cannot surf in between it, right? You cannot. They're going to pull you out and say, you can't do that. Now, you can have like a boogie board or something like that, but usually you cannot have any hard boards like skin board yeah. or a surfboard. You have to go outside of that. And one popular one for that is actually Newport Beach where the wedge is. They'll have the flag and there's only certain yep. times. I believe it's only out. We there. Yeah. From 9 to 5, you're not allowed to surf. Yeah, so regular work hours, you can't. You can do it before, before or, or you can after. do it after without a problem. But at that time, you're, you're boogie boarding or you're body surfing. Same thing with T Street next to St. Clemente. Yeah. I've tried to surf it during those times. doesn't work. you got to walk like a mile. <laughs> right. right. Um, but in, in Florida, now it's pretty new. We have those black ball flags too. Cannot surf. During those times in Australia, they're actually big, long flags, um, and they're yellow and red. And in between that, it's the swimming zone. So instead of, well, yeah, it's same the same concept, thing, same, yeah. same concept. It's a swimming zone, so you're not allowed to surf. So just be aware of what's going on. Guys, if you have any questions about these flags, ask the lifeguards. They're right. not going to eat you. No. They're not going to kill you. They are here to help you guys. Probably most of them are surfers too. Yeah, right? they'll help you guys out and they'll go, oh yeah, 50 yards down the beach, there's the best break, you should really go there. Like, they'll actually tell you where to go. Right, 100%. They'll tell you do's and don'ts, hey, that's a rock, you know, we have rocks here on the bottom, we have reef, or it's a sand bottom, or whatever it may be, right? Yeah, so ask, ask away guys, they will be there for you, 100%. Awesome, so now moving on to the second portion of this is actually the being healthy in surfing or health for surfing, uh, just different things you would do and you wouldn't do. So have people done this? Yeah, like booze, getting hammered and surfing. Don't do it. You know, people drink, people have fun. They usually have a lot of fun when they're drinking, but surfboard versus face, surfboard versus other people's faces, bodies, that's going to cause some trouble, you know, you yeah. can hurt yourself bad. Not only that, yeah, if you do paddle out and you hit somebody with your board and they know that you're hammered and that's why you got hit with the board, the hitting is probably not going to end with the board. No. Right? So there are a lot of people, they do that. They'll paddle back in and now you have a fight in your hands and you're hammered. Yeah. So don't drink before you're surfing. Keep it for after, guys. After you're done surfing, you can drink ahead, but don't do it before it, it's not very smart. Right, if you do it, you're gonna do it by yourself and you're gonna stay away from everybody, that way you don't have to hurt anybody. We still don't recommend you do it because you can kill yourself with it, but definitely don't do it around other people, it's just irresponsible. If you're gonna be responsible, you, right, you do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. That, that telling you what's up. Yeah, so, and if you wanna crush some food, guys, eat at least 30 minutes, 45 minutes before you paddle out because you will feel sick. Heck yeah, man. Like any physical activity, you're paddling out for so long, right? Depending where the break is too. And if you're duck diving, right? If you're not on a point break where you can just surf around the whole entire break, you're going to be duck diving. Like Florida, and the food is it's duck dive up. central, man. Uh, you just paddle, uh, paddle, duck dive, paddle, paddle, duck dive, paddle, paddle, that durable wheel for a while. Um, and you will feel sick and you'll probably throw up, right? That's yeah. the last thing we want. So 45 minutes to an hour before you even surf, you can go ahead and eat your thing. 100%. Yep, perfect. Now, uh, I like doing that all the time, and that's because I had an accident in the past where I shattered my face surfing, uh, but it's actually good to have a partner or a friend with you. Yes, Just yes, in yes. case of an emergency. Not like I need him to push me in the way, more of a you break your face, you're unconscious, or you can't paddle in because something happened. Um, you're gonna need a partner, right? So comment below, let me know if you've got injured bad, if you've dislocated your shoulder, if you've broken your nose, if you, anything that you needed somebody there that could help you yeah, guys, pull you back in or call so 911. Important. Yeah. So important to surf with a buddy. It's just like diving. When you start diving and you do that first course, they say you can't dive by yourself. Dive with a buddy. Same thing, guys, surf with a buddy. Same. Concept. Yeah, same thing, especially if you're doing dawn and dusk surf sessions, right? It's a good idea. We just talked about dawn and dusk, sharks, and stuff like that. Having somebody there with you, that way you can stay safer. It's just about safety. That's all it is, you know? Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. So get your fitness on, right? Before you paddle out, you need to make sure that you'll be able to paddle out to the lineup and that you'll be able to survive yeah. going out there. Yeah, so fitness is going to be a very important thing and also doing like a type of dynamic warm up before you surf, it's a good idea too. It also depends on your age. You know, if you're 16, 17 year old, you're like, 
Or mo. What does, what does that mean? Stretching? Do it. Do it because it will prevent you guys from having some cramps, from pulling a muscle. You never know. Surfing gets pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you can see that or not, it, it can get very intense. So yeah. if you stretch out or you do a little quick warm up, like no more than like a minute if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, at least your muscles are kind of warm and they're ready to go out and you won't get hurt as much as you would if you didn't. Right, 100%. So being fit, working out, training out of the water is a huge thing for surfing. So big, so surf big. conditioning, you know, 100%. to help your paddle, to help your core, you know, just going to the gym and doing regular crunches, it's going to get you that six pack and it's going to show a nice muscle. But that's it. But that's it. It's not really the whole entire core, everything around your, your abs, right? Your back and your lower back is part of your core and you really yeah. need to activate it and focus a lot on that yeah. to have a strong core so you can surf longer, less injuries and land bigger moves, correct? Um, and then, man, it can be weights. It can be an actual weight routine. If people think that, you know, bench pressing, it's not exactly what you're doing, but there's ways to do bench press where it's going to kind of mimic your pop-up. Like unstable. Unstable like as that. well. It depends too where you're doing how much weight. If you do dumbbell bench press on a stability ball, oh, that so really hard. engages your core. It really so, does. So, so hard. But if you don't have access to that, you can do it in a, in a regular bench. You would just use dumbbell yeah. instead of the... The Olympic barbell. Yeah, one hundred percent. And staying inside your comfort zone, guys. If you don't feel comfortable, if it's twenty <clears> feet <throat> out, don't paddle out. If there's something in your gut telling you do not go, do not go. Because when when that happens, a lot of the time, say, so like you don't feel it in your gut, but you still go anyways. You something's gonna happen. So, sometimes bad things happen. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, man, I knew it. I felt it. I didn't think I should go, and I went and this happened, your leash broke, and now you're just treading water, trying to come in, and that rip just keeps taking you out. And you yeah. have to, if there's a lifeguard, hey, you have, somebody to assist, have somebody to assist you. If you're paddled out by, your surf, uh, by, your, by yourself at dawn, and that leash broke, and now you're like, oh uh -oh. man, by myself <laughs> here in the ocean, nobody's around, there's my board getting slammed in a short break, and now I'm either gonna try to surf, uh, swim back in, or I'm gonna sit here until somebody else paddles out. Uh, or, or worse, you know, just keep getting taken out by the current 100%. far, far out. So make sure you guys stay inside your comfort zone. If you don't feel comfortable, do not go out. Don't take that risk. Um, no, that's not right. That's no, not right. It, it really isn't. There's going to be another day, you know. It, yeah, it just... don't try to impress anybody either, guys. There's no point of impressing anybody when you're risking your life. Like, that's just not no. a part of surfing. No, if it's something in the competition and you're going in and everybody's paddling out together and it's a, a thing where the event holders are thinking, no, you guys can definitely do this, that's a different story. Yep, you know? yep, 100%. So, being aware of your surroundings, right? Looking back often when you're in the lineup to, to pick out a landmark, like looking at a like, blue and white umbrella, like, okay, I cannot pass that blue and white umbrella. Being aware of where you are on the beach and how far you paddled from where you actually started. Right, and hopefully that blue and white umbrella are yours or your friends. Because <laughs> if you look at a blue and white umbrella and, and it disappears, you're like, man, I'm lost. I paddled out too far. The rip took me somewhere else. You're like, no, the, the location has been right there. It's just that person left and went home. Yeah, so it looks for something else like a tree, a, a building, a, a building, lifeguard tower, a, anything anything that's static and there. Even your and, towel if you can see it. Uh, yeah, if you put something there that you can keep uh, an eye on, you'll be completely fine. Just yeah. be aware of where you're paddling out so you know where to come back to. And again, this is really geared towards somebody that's new that's looking yeah, for, for sure, for some sure. advice for that. For sure. So now let's move on to our third topic, the basic rules of surfing, the priority and the wave and whether or not you know when to ditch or when to hold on to your board because that is a big debate that big, a lot of people go through. So let's go talk about the priority and the wave. Um, when you're surfing and somebody is on a wave already, do not go on it. You will get run over. Like, yes, it will happen 100%. And if they don't run you over, they will get pissed off at you. Right. So again, being aware of that guy's on the wave first. That's his wave. Even if you caught 30 waves and you haven't caught anything yet, yeah, he can be nice about it and let you get a wave. But still, depending on where you're paddling and where you're standing up, it's that person's wave. 100%. And if you're at the peak of a wave and they're 
on let's say it's a right way right they're over here and you're over here they have priority because they're closest to the white water well let's do this here's Salome and I were actually paddling right paddle battle right here next to each other Is it a the right way it's that? a left so when I we're sitting down on the board and we're looking at the beach it's surfers terms is gonna be left right if the people at the beach are looking at me it's gonna be the opposite there's gonna be the opposite but surfers even though they're looking at the wave from the sand they can see oh it's a left even though it's their right because it's yeah. a surfer's yeah. left and a surfer's so right if we were to go paddle on a left wave i would have the priority because i am deeper in the wave and i'm closest to the white water she would have more waves to surf even though we're next to each other that's just something for people if i was 10 feet away from her same exact thing it, it would be her wave so and if it was a right it would be him correct right so very important to to understand that now can i like though it's a it's a it's a left right can i like paddle around you oh heck and no. take that do that, that spot no that's called snaking don't ever do that people will get pissed off yeah and i will still go if he does that because that was your he just anyways. went around me right and then you can say hey man you snaked me like no no you snaked me because you just went around me so that's my way sorry for your left breath yeah and if you guys are on the same line right if we're if i'm in front of him and he's right behind me who has the priority right the one that's the furthest out has the priority so the one that's furthest out from the beach has the priority on that coming wave yeah yeah and usually if you're standing further out maybe you have a bigger board and you stand up first anyways that's going to be your wave as well yeah right because you stood up first yeah now ditching your board or holding on to the board <sighs> there's different times to do it well first things first you never ditch your board ever if there's somebody behind you for sure don't do that you're if, gonna get yourself hurt you're gonna get the person behind you hurt and the person surfing the wave hurt don't do it it's the most dangerous thing you could ever do if you know how to duck dive if you know how to turtle dive you do those before yeah. You ditch your board. That is not safe. No, that's not safe at all. Not only that, it's not safe for you too because now that board is caught by the white water. We have no control over it. You have a leash. Great, you feel that it's there, but you don't know where it's going in that white water. It can come back and hit you in the face, hit you in the chest, hit you in the shoulder, hit you in the leg, right? You don't know. So don't ditch that board. Now, you're completely by yourself. Nobody's wrong. Could you do it? Yeah, but again, there's that chance of that board coming back around and hitting you. And now you're by yourself and you're getting hurt. But normally, you don't ever ditch that. You duck dive it, you turtle roll it, throw your legs around it, you hug it for dear life. You don't let that board fly onto anybody because even so, if the leash breaks. So when do you breaks. actually throw the board though? When do you actually ditch it? I mean, I wouldn't. It could be where I'm paddling and the lip's going to break on my back and I could potentially injure myself. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, so I ditch it when it's like a huge wave and I know I cannot duck dive that thing with my board. I look back first, making sure nobody's behind me so I don't hurt anybody and then I ditch it. But I'm saying like it has to be over 10 feet for me to do that because I can't duck dive it. And it's a timing too, guys, you know, and that's all it is because if that lip's gonna break on you as you're kind of trying to duck dive, bad things can happen too. You can actually have your face slam into the board because we you're trying dive. to duck dive and the lip just hits you perfectly on your back or your head yeah. and it slams that where if you would have ditched the board it's all good you stay in a little ball you grab sand whatever it may be and you feel the board tombstoning behind you as you're grabbing sand and you can climb up yeah the and if you guys are falling off guys don't don't fall off in the little ball don't fall off diving in do not dive in when you're wiping out Fall off like a starfish. You know, like when we're kids and they tell you, don't touch anything, fall like a starfish. That's how you want to fall because you never know if it's reef, rocks, sand bottom, if it's shallow, if it's not. The, the starfish is the best way to fall. I grew up in reef, so that is like the first thing that they teach you. Do not dive and do not be a ball. Yeah, it can easily hit your head on the, the floor and... and yeah. Hurt your spine or, or anything like that. Yeah. And when you guys come up, make sure that you raise your hand off of the water first before your head so that you can feel that there's no board coming at you, that there's nobody there. Then you pop your head out. Don't pop your head out right away. 
Yeah, another thing I do too is easily, I just grab my foot where my leash is and I'll climb up the leash. That means the tail now is digging into the water, the nose is up high, and I'm using that flotation to find myself up and I'm making sure that the board is not going all crazy and is going to hit me in the face because yeah. I'm climbing up on that leash. I know exactly where the board's going to be. Yeah. So you have those I options don't. too. I don't feel comfortable doing that. I, I feel love like it's going to hit me in the face. No, yeah, I love doing that. Not only that, it helps me go back up because I have that, you know, it's kind of like That's swimming true. with a lifeguard buoy. You dive down. If you have to come back up, you, you, you climb. Yeah, you have a buoy. It's already yeah. a flotation device. Makes sense. So yeah. we hope that you, we helped you guys know the do's and don'ts of surfing, being healthy, not drinking, the sunscreen part, the priority, the ditching the board. I mean, like we talked about a lot of things today. Yeah. If you need to go back and look at it, um, go ahead. There, and there's so much more. There's so much more to to like uh, surfing etiquette. You know. Yeah, to we're gonna cover. give you guys piece and pieces. Yeah, and eventually and might be able to do a whole show on just the surfing etiquettes. I'm where sure you we will. Can do and you can't do. Right. I'm sure. And guys, please don't forget to comment on the video to like, to share with your friends because even though you're a super shredder, you might know somebody that's not a super shredder yeah. or somebody that's looking for that information. When you hear that, you can say, hey, here's the video. These guys are talking exactly about that. This can help you out, right? Yeah. And again, if you have your own tips and you don't agree with some of the things you said, that's fine. Let us know though. Let us know what you don't agree with and what your other tips are because it might be something that we never even thought of. You know, everybody comes from different parts of the world and where she learned to surf was different from where I learned to surf and if you're from different Australia from or from South Africa, like that's not how we do it. That's not how you guys do it. We right? do it differently, but it, it's, okay. I think it's mostly international. The rules are very mm -hmm. international. Yeah. We've traveled all, the, all over the world. If you follow it, you'll be just fine being nice to people respect others that's really just what it's about yeah for sure so we're comment, one big family comment below let us know what you do what you don't do um and again um share with all your friends that's going to help them out and definitely it's going to help us out right yeah for sure awesome guys we'll check you out on the next episode yes